I'm Alexis Van Herkman, and welcome to Resolve in a Rush, where you'll learn DaVinci Resolve grading and finishing techniques in under five minutes. In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate three trimming techniques that are available in DaVinci Resolve that you may or may not be aware of. They're all pretty cool, and they work very differently. So let's just jump into it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the swap edit. This is something that has actually been in Resolve for a little while, but it's buried underneath an obscure keyboard modifier. So the way swap edits work in Resolve is you basically select a clip, and then you press Command and Shift while you're dragging it, and this allows you to swap it with other clips in the timeline without having to do a bunch of dragging around. And there's another way to do this, which is if you hold the command and option keys down after you've selected a clip, you can do a swap insert where you're actually dragging the clip along and whatever part of a clip gets bisected by the clip you're dragging simply gets pushed to after the end of that clip. So it's two different ways of quickly swapping clips around in your timeline. Now, one thing I'll let you know is if by any chance I'm just going to option drag this audio clip to create a split edit, if you're in this situation and you try to use these modifiers, they won't work. Swap edits currently only work for clips where the audio and the video start and end at the same time. But if you're creating a quick assembly and you just want to swap clips around, it's a great technique to know about. So another thing that's been added to DaVinci Resolve that you may or may not know about is the ability to double click a clip in the timeline to open it up in the source viewer so that you can use the source viewer to do trimming. So you can either drag in and out points and these changes will be reflected in the timeline once you release the mouse. And I'm doing these changes in selection mode. So anything I do is either going to create a gap or overwrite an adjacent clip. Or if I'm in trim mode, now all of a sudden the changes I make are rippling the timeline. So I've got total flexibility to do these operations as resizes or as ripples. Or I can use JKL, move around, and then use the I and O keys to do the same kind of rippling. I'm going to undo all of that. And then one last thing I'll show you here is if I hold the shift key down while I drag an in point or an out point, I can move both the in and out point simultaneously to do the equivalent of a slip trim operation. So I'm basically slipping these to encompass a different range of media within this clip without actually changing that clip's position or duration in the timeline. So this is a really good thing to know about. And then one other thing you'll want to know about is the ability to trim gaps. So I've got a gap here, and the trim tool is still selected. So with the trim tool selected, I can actually ripple gaps, just as if they were clips. I can roll the edit between a clip and gap, and it's actually incredibly liberating to be able to do this and not really have to pay too much attention to what I'm dragging. I can just select whatever I think will make the change I want to make and that change just gets made with no limitations. Three really cool little trimming techniques. I hope you found them useful and if you want more information you should check out my editing in DaVinci Resolve 12 title from Ripple Training. I'm Alexis Van Herkman. Thanks a lot for watching.